know, our circadian rhythm is just our, our, uh, body's intrinsic rhythm around like a 24 hour rhythm that's within every cell in our body. Actually, every living creature on this earth has an intrinsic rhythm. Circa just means about D and day. Um, and in the absence of any environmental cues, you'll actually have a rhythm. In fact, in Europe, they do all these cave experiments where they like have people retreat into caves for a certain amount of time and then just like watch kind of what happens. Actually, I haven't seen a lot published on this. I need to find those results. But um, but what's interesting is the rhythm of humans living in caves, even if they're together, it, the day actually gets longer and longer and longer. So they did one study where it was uh, before COVID started and the people were in the cave and they came out and it was, you know, the pandemic and like they had no idea. But whenever they go in to get the person or people in the cave, they always say like, oh, it's too early, right? Like you're here too early. I still have, you know, a couple more weeks or whatever, but they're not too early. It's just that in the absence of environmental cues, the rhythm of the, the human sort of becomes longer and longer. Uh, but that's a very unnatural environment. What's supposed to happen is we have this intrinsic cycle and then every day it's reinforced by these predictable environmental cues, which keep us synchronized with the external world. Um, and what's happening today is that we are losing exposure to a lot of those cues. We spend our time indoors instead of outdoors. We have uh, thermostats that keep the temperature at a constant level, both day and night. Um, we get too much light in the evening. You know, social rhythms are off. Eating timing is off. Everything is kind of off. And so the theory is that there's this environmental mismatch between our environments and our physiology, and that leads to us just functioning less well as an organism. Our physiology is not optimized. Um, and this is true from a sleep perspective. You'll sleep worse if you don't have optimization of those cues. The external cues that keep us optimized are called Zeitgebers timekeepers, just the German word for timekeepers. So if you don't have appropriate zeitgebers, you will uh, have poor sleep. You'll have, you know, be sleepier during the day. And even just from a metabolic standpoint, you may be more likely to be obese, have blood sugar problems, all of that. Um, in neurologic diseases, you know, neurologic diseases have circadian rhythms to this. If you start to pay attention to it, you'll notice this everywhere, right? Like juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. They tend to have myoclonus on awakening in the morning. Um, there's epilepsies that just occur during sleep. Is it sleep? Is it circadian? You know, some, sometimes we can sort those out. Headaches, cluster headache is the typical example, right? People will wake up at like 2.01 a.m. every day with this excruciating headache. You know, it's literally 2.01 every day. How does that happen? happen, you know, it's some circadian factor that's triggering it. Um, even stroke, there was a nice study in 2021 where they looked at stroke and saw that ischemic stroke was actually more likely in the early AM, making wake up strokes very, you know, one of the most common type of stroke. And then subarachnoid hemorrhage was more likely midday, kind of interesting, uh, strikes the person while at work or, you know, when they're out and about, um, less likely to happen overnight. Dementia, we all know about sundowning that happens overnight. People become more confused, wander, all of that. And Parkinson's disease has lots of circadian abnormalities. If you look even early on in the disease process, things that are supposed to have a strong circadian rhythm, like blood pressure, they might be less rhythmic than, than they should be um, in a patient with early Parkinson's.